Well, earlier in the show we spoke about Indigenous businesses with Natalie Walker. Our next guest is not only the co-founder of AMC, but the CEO of one of these businesses, and it's called Met Message Stick Communications. It's a niche technology communications and media service provider, Michael McLeod, the CEO, joining us in the studio. Michael, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, you are one of these certified businesses, actually, that we were just speaking with Natalie about. Is that right? I, I am indeed, yes. yes. So uh, It's a very strict process, and it ensures that it is an Indigenous business, and uh, uh, I'm one of the lucky ones. I got through that certification. Tell us how Message Stick worked. When was it created, and, and what is the business? Oh, right. Look, um, Message Tech Communications was established eight and a half years ago, and it was based on the premise that an Aboriginal person, Indigenous person, could actually own and manage a uh, business without any funding from government or any philanthropy or charity, um, and that it could engage with and uh, develop relationships with the corporate sector and just do commercial, pure commercial business. What do you think is the success of actually being... Uh, becoming profitable but being financially independent from grants and subsidies as you just said I mean that's the aim how do you actually do that though uh, to be honest it's a lot of hard years up yeah. front first. Yeah. So <laughs> I think it was two two years to uh, Russell my my uh, 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 mentor and friend and also a director and co-founder of message stick uh, we went without and uh, it was just yeah. really about uh, getting business set up and seeing if what we were hoping our goals and our visions would be accepted by the corporate what sector. was it like getting your first contract a first contract Can of you about thirty-four dollars, I think it was, <laughs> um, and I think we still have it framed. It was oh, really? amazing, of, a feeling, an experience in itself. So. You've got bigger clients, I imagine, now than that first thirty-four dollars. Oh, we do now. <laughs> yes, What's I must admit. Example? Yeah, um, uh, CBA is our uh, our largest customer at, at the moment, um, but um, uh, we're talking about Australia's top uh, corporate. Uh, corporates as such enterprises. So there's CBA, there's Allen's Arthur Robinson, there's Foxtel, there's um, uh, Macquarie Group, uh, uh, Gilbert and Tobin. So uh, again, big ones. Yeah. tell me when they do business with you, or when they first do business with you, do they expect because you're indigenous and it's an indigenous business that it's going to be different from dealing with anyone else in the private sector? I actually try and dissuade them from having those those thoughts. The one thing I wanted to ensure from the very beginning was that um, uh, this is purely about business. So there is the indigenous component though, so they're, for their, you know, their corporate social responsibility angle if they wish to tick those boxes, fine. But it's about doing business and, and myself proving myself that uh, I have the capacity and the capability of rising to the challenge of their procurement uh, guidelines and processes. Now obviously you have built this without government grants and so subsidies and charity, this is a real business. Now of course we've been hearing from Natalie you're going to have the indigenous opportunity policy. You know, do you think that will be any advantage to you at all? Not for my business, but uh, it's not really developed for my business as such. Um, in, in a way, I, I've been successful prior to yeah. uh, the, uh, that policy coming out in July. That's more, I personally believe that will give opportunities for indigenous uh, businesses that are in housing and construction. More importantly, I think it, it actually um, shows the government's commitment to, uh, uh, say, mandating to their biggest suppliers that they need to include Indigenous content, uh, content which is Indigenous suppliers. So it's a national approach to it, and I, I think it's a wonderful way to go. Do you think it would have made a difference to your first few years to have had something like that, what was it, eight years ago? Or... Uh, I probably wouldn't have accepted it. It's just yeah. based on the oh, yeah. fact that it was government. Um, it's government you driven. You really wanted to do it in a purely from a private sector, from our own, our own resources, our own ability to. But you still to encourage it. others to take up that Definitely. opportunity. Yes, yes. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't um, uh, expect any other indigenous business to go through what I went through in, in the early days. Um, from what my experience is that um, everybody needs like a hand up. They don't need a handout. That's exactly what AMPS is about. It's established on the basis that it will just open the door. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll say this, uh, Natalie and AMPS do a fantastic job in what, you know, they're, what, they're, what they're doing, what they're achieving, um, and the long-term goal of what, uh, what can be achieved as well. More importantly, uh, it's not a walk-through. This is not a handout. Indigenous suppliers who go through it. If you were going to give one piece of advice, as you probably do, to Indigenous people setting up their businesses, wanting to do, what would it be? Um, Persevere. 
don't give up. Uh, uh, it's it's the rewards are, are for, for, you know uh, fulfilling at the end when you when you have your success. Yeah. Michael McLeod, thank you very much for joining us, CEO of Message Stick Communications and the co-founder of AMSI. So thank you. Thanks,